Hi, I'm Casey, and today I'm going to be giving a presentation on disulfiram, otherwise also known as an antibuse. So first, I'm going to go um, explain the origin and then the pharmacology and effects, and then some further details such as like the best way to administer it and the best dosage. Um, so disulfiram was first discovered as a preventive um, potential medicine for alcohol in 1937. The way this came about was it was used as an antioxidant in a rubber factory, and the workers there discovered that they became ill after being exposed to it with um, heightened uh, symptoms after being exposed to alcohol or drinking alcohol. And therefore, after this was discovered, there was more research done to test it out. And then finally, in 1951, it was approved by the FDA and started to become popular in the 50s. And it was actually one of the first medications approved by the FDA for alcoholism and currently one of the most common drugs to treat alcohol dependence today. So a summary of the way that disulfiram works is that when it is taken with alcohol, it causes a really bad reaction. Some refer to the symptoms as um, a very bad hangover feeling. And a big part of the way disulfiram will work, other than causing the negative reactions, is that it um, causes the expectancy of the individual who may be experiencing alcoholism. It causes the expectancy of um, anticipating a very bad reaction, which usually you know, deteriorates people from um, deciding not to drink alcohol. So it has proven very successful in prevention, relearning, self-control, and abstinence in the long term. And overall, it can change the way of how one views alcohol. And due to the bigger stressor on how it affects um, the decision to drink alcohol psychologically, it can also be considered a pharmacologically assisted psychotherapy. And on to how the um, disulfiram and ethanol reaction works. So first, um, the way that uh, your body metabolizes alcohol. So the liver metabolizes the alcohol and first alcohol um, is converted into acetaldehyde by an enzyme called aldehyde dehydrogenase or ADH. And then after that, the acetaldehyde is converted into acetate by aldehyde dehydrogenase. And disulfiram prevents the aldehyde dehydrogenase from metabolizing the acetaldehyde, therefore leading to an accumulation of a lot of acetaldehyde. And that accumulation of acetaldehyde is what causes the negative symptoms experience because your body isn't used to having the excess acetaldehyde. And so because alcohol isn't allowed to um, be metabolized normally, due to the interference of disulfiram, that's what causes the uh, negative, unpleasant symptom reaction afterwards. And usually after taking, um, drinking or consuming alcohol, it takes about 10 to 30 minutes afterwards for this disulfiram ethanol reaction to um, affect your body. And then how severe it affects your body also depends on the amount of alcohol as well as the amount of disulfiram taken. So on to the side effects of the disulfiram ethanol reaction. So first off, we have um, things that interfere with like your nervous system and brain, such as vertigo, confusion, headaches, really bad migraines. And then um, it also causes tachycardia, increased blood pressure, chest palpitations, which uh, usually makes people feel more panicked and unwell and may might even result in like a panic attack. And then with your stomach, it causes uh, nausea, vomiting, feelings of uneasiness. And this also leads to um, your skin feeling red and flushed and um, a lot of sweating. So in summary, um, just a really bad um, heightened hangover. And if uh, one decides that they want to continue drinking alcohol after taking disulfiram, it's safe to wait at least seven to 14 days before consuming alcohol. And then one study that I wanted to bring attention to was one where uh, they did a whole meta-analysis of different disulfiram research and experiments done in the past. And in this, they went 
over um, 22 studies and divided it up. So 12 studies required medication intake by um, medication intake supervision by um, a family member, a friend, or someone responsible. For some people, it might not. It might even be like uh, clinical staff or legal staff uh, regulating if they're taking their disulfiram or not. And then in the other eight, um, there was no supervision, so it was up to the individual themselves to just to be responsible to take their medication and have a good sense of patient adherence. And then in the other two studies, they split it up so that half were supervised and half weren't. And one notable uh, result was that uh, people who were supervised had a significant um, success rate compared to the ones where they weren't supervised at all. And this was a success rate of 50, over 50%. And so that really goes to stress that um, in when one is experiencing alcoholism or alcohol dependence disorder, you know, they're not going to willingly adhere to their medication, but with um, assistance of a doctor, like a psychiatrist regulating them, or sometimes it's a court ordered um, medication, then it can really be helpful to um, stray from the path of alcoholism. And then for administering disulfiram, uh, once it is taken, so uh, not even um, just alcohol, like the one you drink, like ethanol should be avoided, but anything that might be in certain products, such as perfumes, colognes, mouthwashes, sauces, medications containing alcohol should also be avoided. And then um, again, uh, the proper dosage is around 125 to 500 milligrams daily, but that um, is also taken care of by the doctor to decide what's best for you know your size or your past medical history and there's a lot of um, they go through a lot of medical history or certain exams you might need to do like EKG tests to see if this is something that is suitable for you beforehand to make sure it's safe and then in addition there's um, other side effects that aren't from uh, the ethanol and disulfiram reaction, just um, in general that people experience from disulfiram itself. And this is um, small headaches, drowsiness, dermatitis, or irritation of the skin. And this is also something that pregnant women or women intending on getting pregnant should not take. And then to stress again, supervision is key. Um, it provides the maximum chance that the patient taking disulfiram will uh, go through with actually consuming it and allowing their stomachs to absorb it. Um, there's incentives that have shown positive results or court order disulfiram therapy. And next, I'm going to be showing um, that disulfiram, as of right now, has an abstinence rate of 50%, which is a really large amount, and uh, it takes over an average of 20 months that results in the highest rate of abstinence. So in conclusion, disulfiram is a very successful uh, drug for alcoholism as long as, you know, the, uh, there's a great deal of medication adherence and the patient actually takes it. It um, relies off of psych psychology sort of to, um, for patients anticipating the expectancy of a bad reaction. And because of that, it tears them from wanting to drink alcohol and if taken regularly and in the right um, manner, it definitely can lead to an absence rate for a very long term. Okay, thank you for watching, and I hope that um, you learned something from this presentation.